In the last section, we learned about NGRX store. So we learned about state, action and reducers in NGRX. Now, before we proceed further in this course, let's also go ahead and let's install an NGRX dev toolkit. So if I go to NGRX documentation, so here we have already learned about NGRX store. In here, we learned about actions, reducers and state. And we also talked about store. Now, before we proceed further, let's go ahead and let's install NGRX Dev Toolkit. So for that, if I expand this developer tools, in here you will see that we have NGRX slash store dev toolkits. So if I go to the overview, here you will see it says store dev tools provides developer tools and instrumentation for store. So basically what NGRX Dev Tool gives us is it allows us to debug our NGRX application state. So for example, let's say if we go to our application here, currently our application is working as expected. So the state is changing and we are able to see the change. Now, sometimes it might happens that you have created a state, you have created an action and for that you have also created a reducer. But for some reason, the state is not changing. So for example, if I click on this increment button and if the counter does not increment, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is the action is not getting dispatched when this increment button is clicked. And the second option is the action is getting dispatched, but we are not updating the state properly. So to debug what issue is going on with the state, we can use NGRX store dev toolkit. So let's go ahead and let's install this dev toolkit for our NGRX application. For that, the first thing which you need is for your Chrome browser, you need Redux extension. So let me open a new tab here and let's first go to Google. And here I'm going to search for Redux Chrome extension. So here you can see we have this link Redux dev toolkit and we can get it from Chrome Web Store. Let me click on this link. And here we have the option to click on this button in order to add this extension to Chrome browser. So let me go ahead and let me click on this button. And here let's click on add extension. So Redux Dev Tool has been added to Chrome. So this extension has been added for the Chrome browser. Now, if I go to our Angular application and there, if I open developer tools, here you can see I have this option Redux. So if you have not installed it, you will not see this option. Only if you have installed this Redux Chrome extension, then only you will see this option. Let's go to this option. Now here it says no store found. Make sure to follow the instruction. Basically here what is happening is this Redux toolkit is not able to find any store for this NGRX application which is running at this URL. Now we have a store in our application because in last few lectures we have worked with that store. So the question is why this extension is not able to find the store for this NGRX application. The reason for that is in order to make this extension get access to our NGRX application store, we also need to install this NGRX store dev tools in our NGRX application. For that, let's go to this installation link. And here we can see the Angular CLI command in order to add NGRX store dev toolkits in our NGRX application. So here I'm going to copy this command. Let's go to our Angular application. Let me open VS Code built-in terminal. And here I'm going to select command prompt. And here I'm going to paste that. Now here I don't want to install the latest version. Instead, I want to install that version which is compatible with Angular 16. Here let's press enter. So it is saying that it is going to install NGRX Store Dev Tools version 16. So do we want to proceed with this installation? Yes, I want to proceed with this installation. So I will type Y and I'll press enter. And it should start installing this dev toolkit for our Angular application. So the package has been installed successfully. And to check that, if I go to 
package.json file. So here we have our package.json file. Here you can see that ngrx store dev tools has been added. Now let's go back to our application. And now you will see that it has identified this store. So let me move it a little bit up to show you. So you see it has identified this store from this ngrx application. If I go to state here, you can see the current state of our application. So they are in our store. Currently, we have one state which is counter. And in that state, we have two properties counter with initial value zero and toggle with initial value false. Right. Let me move it a little bit down. All right. Now what will happen is also if I go to the action. So currently there is no action which has been dispatched. But let me go ahead and let me click on this increment button. So you see an action has been dispatched. And what is the type for that action? It is increment. And here also you can see that action has been logged. If I go to this action, if I select this action in the left hand side, now I can see the type of that action, which is increment. And if I go to state, you see, this is the current state after this action has been dispatched. And in the current state, the counter value is one and toggle is false. If I click on this toggle, another action has been dispatched, which is toggle custom input. If I select that action, you can see this is the current state. And in the current state, the counter value is one and toggle value is true, right? If I click this decrement button, in that case, the decrement action has been dispatched. And if you want to see the current state after that action has been dispatched, we can click on that action. And in here, in the raw folder, you can see the current state value. So in the current state, for this counter state, the counter value is zero and toggle is true. So in this way, using this dev toolkit, we can debug our ngrx application whenever a state is not updating in our angular application we can check if an action is getting dispatched or not and if the action is getting dispatched what is the current state value and there if the state value is not changing then in our code we have to identify what is going wrong and we have to fix it you can also see the timeline of all these actions which has occurred so if i play this you see at what time which action has been dispatched and how it is working again if i dispatch one more action by clicking on this minus button now you see again this toggle custom input action has been dispatched and for that the state has changed the reducer has changed the state so the toggle has changed to false so this is the current state value and if you see here whenever an action is getting dispatched it is not updating the current state. Instead, it is returning a new state with the updated value. And that's what we learned in the very beginning of this course. A reducer does not change the current state. It does not modify the current state. Instead, from the current state, it creates a new state. And in that new state, it updates the property of that state, which is supposed to be updated. And it returns a new state. Now, also, if I go back to our application, after this ngrx store dev tool has been added to our application, you will see that here the app module has also been modified. Now, what has been modified in this app module? So let's go to app module.ts file. There you will see that store dev tools module has been added. So if this is not automatically added, you need to add this line in the imports array of your app module. This is important. If you don't add this, then this dev toolkit will not work. So only installing the dev toolkit is not enough. You also need to add store dev tools module in the imports array of your app module. And on that, we are calling this instrument method. And to that, we are passing an object. This object is the configuration object. Here, we are telling that the max age is 25. That means you can see up to 25 actions which has been dispatched but if you want to make it unlimited then you can simply remove this configuration but i'm going to keep it here and here the second option is log only what it does 
it makes sure that in a non dev environment the redux dev tools extension is in log only mode this means that it significantly reduces the overhead in production environment while still providing valuable debugging information so in a non dev mode it makes sure that the redux toolkit does not store the full state data or allow for state manipulation features okay all right so to use store dev toolkit you need to do three things first you need to install redux chrome extension for your browser second you need to install store dev tools using this command and third you need to add store dev tool module in app module so now in the future lectures if we will face any issue where our state is not updating then we are going to make use of this tool to debug our application and to check why the state is not updating whether the action is getting dispatched or not and if the action is getting dispatched then whether the state is changing or not this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day